Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. By the way, guys, if this broadcast is a blessing to you and you'd like to help support this work, you can do that by going to IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. Uh, also, our address normally appears at the end of the broadcast. Uh, at any rate, kind of still very, very sick, guys. I apologize for that, but there's just very serious things happening that I need to get your attention to, and that's why we're here. Uh, Russia, this is actually about five days old. This report here came on the, uh, the Express.UK. Uh, Russia issues stark warning to Ukraine for proposed missile launch above the annexed Crimea. Uh, tensions in Eastern Europe continue to mount after the Ukraine military looks uh, sets to fire missiles into Russian airspace near Crimea, a move which has been condemned by the Kremlin. Again, it was done by Harry Walker on November 26th. Uh, this here is uh, official Russian statesman right here, uh, Izvolsky. Uh, he condemns the military actions there that they're talking about doing in this test firing of this, of this military missile there. So he says here has already sent its request to the aviation authorities so that they can immediately remove all the bans and revoke their decision. Um, let me just turn the volume down just a tad bit here. Uh, but anyway, he says that uh, he believes the attempts to activate restricted zones are inadmissible, uh, especially in order to conduct military exercises on the territory of another state. Uh, we reminded the Ukrainian side that all such actions must be agreed with the Russian Federation, at least regarding the open space above the sea. Uh, he continues on uh, in saying uh, this did not happen. And uh, it's quite evident, by the way, that it did not happen. He says, uh, we are currently working on removing all the tensions that have arisen as quickly as possible but, uh, but, you know, guys, all that has failed to work out at all. Uh, the other day we showed you yesterday about, um, from different friends that we have, showing the different military equipment coming into Crimea, uh, being put into place there. This is another example of it right here. These are the S-300 missile batteries that are being moved uh, into place in Crimea, preparing for these missile launches there that uh, Ukraine is planning on doing. Russia, no doubt, if the missile uh, strays into their own airspace, is definitely planning on taking those missiles out. That seems to be very evident by the military power that Russia is moving into Crimea. This did come in through Kurth, there, uh, the, uh, the border city there with Russia, where there is a uh, way to bring goods over via uh, barges there. Um, enormous amount of equi military equipment, by the way, that has come in through this direction here, as well as this uh, video footage here, another convoy of military equipment Russia is moving in. Russia is anticipating that Ukraine uh, may be try trying to provoke uh, or really escalate a situation that could really turn out into an all-out war. We know we, we, we reported a little while back when Russia brought all this equipment in uh, and now, you know, of course, Russia removed it there once they kind of made some agreements with uh, um, different members there, unbeknownst to us uh, who that was. Uh, they removed some of the equipment, but now all that equipment is coming right back into Crimea once again. These here are covered up. Um, not sure exactly what they have up underneath these tarps right here, but uh, Russia kind of keeping it quiet, some of the things that they're moving into place there. This gives us a little bit better idea of what this may be here because the tarp not quite covering the entire thing there. Um, I myself don't know per se what this is, but uh, some heavy duty equipment uh, nonetheless that Russia is bringing in there to protect Crimea from any possible attacks or invasion uh, of the property. Now, of course, Ukraine did make it known that they were going to test fire these missiles um, over Crimea. And uh, so this is what's gotten everything all stirred up. And of course, this is only part of it, only part of it, guys. I know it's even, it gets even worse, you know. We, we, then we have uh, Turkey, 
Now this issue with Turkey, as we reported yesterday, President Erdogan says that he uh, invaded Syria to be able to topple Bashar al-Assad. That's exactly what he states there. I actually saw the, um, the film of that earlier today. I thought I might have it here, but I don't. Um, this here is uh, astute, news, astute news there. Speaking about this today, President Erdogan of Turkey has issued a statement saying his troops, troops have entered Syria with the intention of ousting President Assad. Now, I just got confirmation a few moments ago, though, that Vladimir Putin has been on the phone with Erdogan. He is trying to get confirmation of what his intentions really are because Putin is there to protect President Bashar al-Assad. So is there going to be an escalated confrontation there? Not really sure, but if you remember this right here, this is the very story that <clears throat> we reported two months ago. Um, and I want to just bring this out as a reminder of what I said there then. Erdogan betrays Putin with stage coup to invade Syria. That was the name of my own article, my own news report. Let's just play a little small clip of this as a reminder. On rail cars, enormous number of tanks are being moved in Turkey to the Syrian border. Now, of course, the Turkish government has already taken in quite a number of tanks as it was in order to, to take the little city there across the lines there. But now they're bringing in more and more tanks, and Russia is That's noticing jarbless. that Turkey is pushing deeper and deeper. I believe that the coup was a stage from the very beginning, and the reason why they staged this coup attempt, no doubt, was to throw Russia off guard. NATO working together. Remember, as we've reported it before on Israeli News Live, that Petro Poroshenko had been at a meeting with President Erdogan in order to take back Crimea. And what I think they're trying to do is to throw Russia off guard. One, get a stronger hold in the Syrian country by putting Turkish troops there. The U.S. already has their own group there. Now Turkey has a mobilized military inside the country. Troops, fighting soldiers, tanks, everything, grad launchers, you name it. They are now inside the country there of Syria. Now, isn't it a kind of interesting? As I mentioned there, Petro Poroshenko had already had uh, meetings there with Erdogan about taking back Crimea. And at the very moment that Erdogan is announcing that he had came to Syria to be able to take and topple Bashar al-Assad, we're also seeing that Ukraine is planning on launching these missiles on, uh, I think, I don't know if it's December 1st or December 2nd, uh, just within either tomorrow or the next day there. And so Russia is having to rapidly deploy a lot of uh, defensive measures there in Crimea. This may be all pre-planned. And I do believe, and I've believed from the very beginning when I looked at all of this, especially with the meeting between Petro Poroshenko and that of uh, uh, you know, President Erdogan there, that this was a staged event, that they had intended to do this all along. And then what the purpose was, was to ignite the war in the Middle East, to first take back Crimea, as well as try to topple uh, Bashar al-Assad. And that doing this, this would drag the rest of the NATO members into a war with Russia using Turkey and, uh, of course, uh, Ukraine. Turkey being the NATO member that the NATO states would be obligated to protect once they enter into a war with Russia. But of course, Ukraine and Turkey working together in order to ignite the conflict. And I think that's exactly what they're about to do. It's just too odd, this, the timing of these events here. And that's what I noticed myself in, in seeing these things. So anyway, another thing here too, Erdogan urges Muslims to protect Jerusalem. Support Palestinians. Turkish president says defense of the Al-Aqsa Mosque should not be left to children armed with stones. Well, that's another issue right there that lets me know that Erdogan is not just going to limit this to Syria. But I do believe, as I stated in our report last night, I've stated it many times before, eventually they're going to take the war to Jerusalem because they want to take and oust the Jews that are living in Jerusalem. Now, it doesn't mean that they're not going to build a third temple on the Temple Mount. Sure they are. In fact, um, I got an email. Uh, I don't know if I got it today or when, but... Uh,